we're going to need to say a few things up in front of the congregation when we dedicate the building. And you know what happens. We've all been there. You lay awake at night before you go to bed. And what am I going to say? You got it all figured out the next morning and scrambled. <laughs> I've done that for a couple of weeks now. So I promise not to serve you up scrambled uh, dedication here. I said, well, let's, uh, let's keep it to an architectural perspective because of all the things in the world, that's one thing I know a little bit about, or thought I did until about 18 months ago. We've been retrained. Um, I look back and, and, and go back when we started really concentrating on attending the church here in 1997. I had been at the church in the late 60s. I look back at Russell Ashton now. Been at his Sunday school services. My grandmother would bring me to the little red church over there and try and straighten us out, which I got two other brothers, so that's kind of fruitless at the time. <laughs> but in 1997, coming back to the church in such a renewed interest and such an, an open vision about life and what our responsibilities were as adults, what I was responsible as being an architecture, and the things that Wes was preaching, I had gone to him after several sermons and said, you know something, every sermon you've written is about me. And I don't know, any, does anybody else feel that way? <laughs> you kind of leave there and you go, my gosh, he's just hit it right in the center of the target. And um, other people in the congregation are so passionate about this church. It goes well beyond Wes, and, and it's so grateful to be a part of that. Until you're in the parking lot and you're approached one day about being in a Christmas cantata. <laughs> you know what it's like to sweat on a November day. Buddy Overby approached me one day, and he says, Mike, we need some help playing the youth area. We need, we need to do something with the youth. Don't read much into that. It wasn't like we need to do something with you. <laughs> we need to look at the church grounds and see what we can do. All, there's all kinds of options, but we can't have them in the bar mall because that's sacred. And if you spill anything in there, you kind of disappear. <laughs> <laughs> or you're up on stage doing it. <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, well, let's look at all the buildings and all the facilities we have. And we, we couldn't look at it just from a youth perspective. Because when you developed an area that was all concrete and had a floor drain in it that we could clean after a youth function, that was the initial programming. You thought to yourself, well, how are the joyful heirs going to interact with the youth? Do they spray the room down when they leave? Or? So we had to step back and, as I say so many times, from a 40,000 foot level and approach this from a whole different perspective and look at where the church was going to grow in five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And this is one of those projects that we've all read where Dr. Richard Carlson says it won't matter in 100 years from now. This building matters in 100 years from now. As, as architects in our trade, we've worked on projects that we've spent so much time on, so much study. John and Merrick can attest to because he has to go behind a lot of my stuff and clean things up. We built it, and in a year it's torn down and gone. You never know what's there. So it's, it, it, from our perspective, it's wonderful to work on a project that you embrace and know that when it's finished, it is a building like has been said before. It's nails, it's sticks. I'm not tr trying to diminish Dickie's effort, but it is at the end of the day, just materials made from God. It's what we do in this building and, what, and the message it leaves this building that I see is the benefit, the real benefit of where our architectural involvement came. I want to say a few things about the SEC team. At the time that the team was uh, the Switzerland Community Church, uh, my business, everything turns into an acronym, so I apologize. When the team started, there were so many people involved and so many people with great input. We narrowed it down to a building committee, which Tom will speak to in a little bit. And it was wonderful to see the passion and the energy that came out of all these ideas, including buddies, the lanes, everybody affiliated with the church. And I said, gosh, we gotta, you know, this is like herding cats. We gotta sit down and go over this. So I called Joseph and I said, Joseph, why don't, why don't you and Kara come up to the house one morning? We'll sit down and figure out what really has to happen here. We were grateful they did. After four pages of notes, I knew that we weren't gonna have a room with a drain in the middle of it when they washed out. The and uh, through faith, uh, through prayer,
prayer and through continued involvement by everybody in this room, we continue to grow and form a team. Our WBA team, I can't say enough about. They're back here in the corner, anchored solid, who helped us, who helped me put this together, a vision on paper. Um, I can bring a lot of ideas, but there's a lot of technical work behind it. I don't want to explain you really fall asleep. Um, but I, I want to give thanks to them and give praise to them, Pam, Michelle, Johnny, um, and so many people that aren't even here that had a hand in this. Um, our consultant team, people you'll never meet, McBain, Mang, and the structural engineering team, even the printing company. Somebody says, well, they just printed drawings and sent them out. During the bidding process, I was so grateful that our printing company had faith and belonged to churches because we sent out, and Vicki will attest to this, so many revisions, so many addendums during the bidding process. And it was so nice to see everybody who had been in churches, who had been in facilities of worship knew that these changes occurred. Hey, we got this idea. Can we get it priced too with everything else? And uh, and so uh, that being said, they really ponied up and did a great job. It was great to be surrounded by that network. And then at the, the end of the day to have Dickie and his team. Um, if this is not validation of finishing strong and what their team can do, I don't know what is. I really don't. And I say that humbly from a lot of projects and working on a lot of great blessed with a number of things on this planet at the end of the day. Thank you, Vicki, and your team. Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> through, through the programming history of this, um, it was interesting to meet with each one of the ministry leaders, to meet with individuals, um, and sometimes unsolicited input that was you know, some of the most important input uh, message in the hallway or, hey, I saw your drawing, can you add this, can you do this? Um, and as momentum gained um, and we started pricing this, there was a mountain to climb. We just, we, at that time I was a part of the church council. Um, I had the benefit of seeing figures and funds and then I saw the Herculean effort that we were going to pursue with doing this and I thought this is, this is beyond materials, methods, and money. This is a faith project. The numbers that we were pursuing and, and and knowing that we would do the drawings and put them on a shelf no architect likes to do that from a liability standpoint by the way we love doing that but but from a programming standpoint and doing this work it was difficult to see the drawings set on the shelf and go, okay now we're going to go out and do a fundraiser and the groundswell of fundraising the groundswell of faith that you and this congregation had to put this building forward and then going and doing the actual pricing exercise, Don says, we're going to go, we, we need it's time to launch. Um, as he says, you know, at some point you got to take the test. you got to quit studying. And when we took the test, the numbers that came forward, and Dickie and his team, we were really blessed to know that a lot of things were going to come to fruition quickly. That first day when concrete was forward, any of y'all been on a construction site, Dickie can attest to this, Don can attest to this. The smell of fresh concrete is wonderful. <laughs> and, and, and to stand up here, knowing the drawings and standing on the foundation wall that's about in this area, looking out, going, "Wow, this is a big building." You usually would look at buildings at the foundation stage, and they're pretty small. But even I was going, "Oh my gosh, this is a big building." Um, and, and knowing that in the big picture of things, it was a it was a small foundation block with the rest of the property and the rest of the planning and the rest of the vision. But if you look at it from a spiritual standpoint, it is the most important foundation block on the campus in the context that so many youth will pass through here and so many, so many lives will be touched by the architecture, by the shape of the spaces, and by the people who come in and out of the space from every generation. And that we're blessed. That we're blessed as architects. Um, when there was a comment made about the dedication, um, I told Pastor Bob in a meeting earlier this week, I said, the irony behind dedication, we look at this as a, as, as a, as a ground mark or um, a, a day of excitement, a day of blessing. And, and indeed, the basic value of dedication, basic um, definition of dedication is that However, I submit that the day of dedication began back in 1930.
1963 when the first building was built on the corner. And the lives that have come out of that church for almost 50 years now, that's a long time, because I did the math in like 47 months, that's almost 50 B. Um, that in itself is a dedication. And um, I'm thankful from our team, from our part, from our heart, from all the people that you ask us to bring to the table, that we're a part of that dedication and today's dedication as well. So um, with blessings, we hope to see now the future, the structures, and the purpose of this building well expand beyond our imagination and place it in the Lord's hand. And